Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. I want to officially welcome everyone to uh, this uh, wonderful airing of On Finding Peace. And I'm uh, very blessed and honored to have my guest, Bianca. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how we find our peace and, you know, what's worked for us and maybe not work for us and, you know, what struggles still exist. And, you know, if anybody wants to join in with their own uh, questions, there is a Q&A tab. So feel free to click that question and we'll get that up there and answer to the best of our ability. Uh, so... Yeah. That said, I am a, uh, briefly about me, I'm a life coach, counselor, uh, blogger, and uh, I go out and give lectures and seminars around the country. So I really enjoy what I do. I'm glad that I can do what I do. And if you need to find me, I'm over at lifesjourneyblog.com. So welcome, Bianca, and uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you're about. Sure. Thank you so much, Chris. It's such an honor to be here. And with our people that are watching, thank you guys for tuning in. Definitely. So yeah, I'm Bianca Rodriguez and I am a licensed marriage and family therapist and I am the founder and host of You Are Complete TV. Mm-hmm. And I have, it's a vlog and it's a podcast and it comes out every Friday. And we basically talk about I interview people and I talk about solutions, Mm S-O-U-L, that I have found bringing together spirituality and psychology. I've been a therapist for over 10 years. I've been a spiritual seeker since, you know, I was a kid. And so I try to help bring together all the things that I know to help people live the life that I really believe they are meant to live. Because as you know, we've chatted. I truly believe that everyone has the answers within themselves. And if I can help shine a light on that and empower people to define within, then, hey, it was a blessed day that I've done my mission. I really feel like I'm called to this work, and that's what I want to empower other people to do. That, that sounds excellent. Did you yeah. type me something? I saw you typing. Is it for me or no? Oh, no. Okay. I am posting over to my social media. And uh, just to let people know that we are on the air. So hopefully we can get as many people as possible to join in. Um, But I do encourage people to uh, check out your podcast. And actually, let me, as as you were typing this, just to put down, because I really like this. It's going to be so... um, Okay, if you look in the chat box, did I get that right? Let me look. Chat box. That's right. So perfect. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody saw visually what you were saying because I really like that. That, that was really uh, really cool that way. So good. oh good. So do we um, have like watching? Do you ever ask these people to like tell us where they're from? Do they ever like give you any feedback? We could do that. I've done it before, and sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. All right. Um, I think where we get the most viewers is when this gets rebroadcast. Uh, but we can definitely ask that if anybody wants to throw into the chat box, uh, you know, where you are from. Uh, I know we do have a handful of people uh, that I can see are online. There, there may be more that I'm not aware of. Uh, so if you feel like it, as anonymously as you wish, just to uh, – where you may be from. I know. And, um, Where are you guys located? I know. They could be like all over the place. Other planets even. Pluto? Pluto anyone? Hey, you know. Well, that might take a while for the transition. So we'll, we'll have to, that'll be a long delay. And uh, <laughs> so, um, so this whole thing, you know, looking at uh, when we talk about, you know, finding inner peace and all that. What, what does that mean to you? Uh, how have you found that or defined that or experienced that 
you know, because uh, I think we throw that out there. And I know I talk about that a lot, how, you know, finding inner peace and, and all of that. Um, oh, my sister's on from Amtrak. What's up? Oh, cool. <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome, sister. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, uh, I have three sisters, so this is the eldest. Claudia! <laughs> I don't know if she wanted to be known as the eldest, but okay. Welcome, eldest sister. <laughs> <gasps> All right. So inner peace. Yeah. yeah. So what does that mean to you? I, I think we just assume people know what we're talking about when we say that stuff. Mm. I started out easy, didn't I? <laughs> uh, inner peace to me is that space where I connect to you know, I always point out that there's like the thoughts that I have happening and then there's the observer of those thoughts. So the fact that I have awareness of my thoughts mm -hmm. allows me to know that there is another part of me, which is the observer. And to me, that is my spirit. That is my soul. And when I am living more plugged in to that spirit, Mm -hmm. to my soul, that is when I feel most at peace. And I think that, that, you know, my spirit, my soul is connected to whatever the divine energy of the universe is. And I truly believe that is, that is infinite and all knowing. And so, you know, I practice Vedic meditation, which is uh, the pre, it's basically what, what transcendental meditation came out of. And right. I do, that, you know, I, I meditate twice a day for 20 minutes in order to get plugged in and reconnected to my spirit. And so when I am in alignment with my spirit is when I feel that inner peace. And it took a really long time to get there. And I definitely don't live there 24 seven. And I don't know too many people who do maybe, you know, the Dalai Lama and, you know, some other people. And of course, that would be great to get there, but I don't know if everybody in this lifetime may get there. And so I just try to make as much contact with my, with my soul as I can throughout the day and allow that to be um, my guide. And, you know, another thing that allows me to do that, I don't always joke around about dancing, but really any activity that I feel like brings people into what I call flow, mm -hmm. that's where you're so present that you are lost in the moment and all that matters is that thing that you are doing you know to me that is also another state of of inner peace so it's really like right if we if we think of our thoughts as like the ego right. um you know not being as associated with the ego or having the ego um merging with the ego and knowing that those are two separate things and that we need ego mm -hmm. but it's not it, i try not to let that run the show and to plug into this um this soul you know, it's like, it's like my right. GPS system. Right. Yeah, no, that, that, that's... Everything's okay. It's all going to be okay. Because whenever <laughs> I tap into that, no matter what shit storm's going on, I know it's all going to be okay. And that, to me, is inner peace. Yeah. No, and, and, and that is so awesome to see that whole connectedness. You know, and, and to me, I, I think that's one of the things that's missing when we look at our, our current society and, and the way people are interacting with you know, each other, with nature, with whatever it may be, it is, uh, I, I think there's this huge disconnect. And when people are getting tossed out and saying, I, you know, I, I'm out of peace and then I don't know how to find it, they're not stopping. You know, we're, we're, we're not connecting. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, we stop long enough to talk to somebody but not really listen to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, like be present with someone. And, and that's a huge difference than just hearing what people are talking about. But we're in such a rush to go from here to here to here. And, you know, it's like we've lost something big. Huge. huge. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, part of the reason, you know, I love being, you know, a, a therapist is that for that 45 minute slot, like my intention is to just be 100% present with someone else. And what started happening was that I started to get messages from the divine for the other person in the session. And so I realized that the more that I get out of self and mm -hmm. I really get present with that person, that the divine will speak through me. And I feel like 
made interpretations. I have goosebumps just like saying, I'll make interpretations for people that hit them like here. And I'm like, that's not me. Mm-hmm. Like, that's so much bigger than me. Like, I'm just a person. Like, I don't, you know, but if I can get out of my own way, right. but I have to do that by being fully present. And it, you don't have to be a therapist to do that, right? You could do it with anyone to look in their eyes and really be there with them. And there is a piece, because I feel like you just, you can't do two things at once. Mm-hmm. You can be present and do it with something else. You just can't. No. You have to be doing no. one thing and that's it. Yeah. I mean, our brains are wonderful tools, but if we really want to be present, we can't multitask to be present. You know, okay. I might be able to multitask to do something over here and maybe check an email over there, but that doesn't mean that I'm present with someone. So tasks maybe, but actually being there, you know, and, and for me, that's, it's been a long struggle for me for inner peace. And one of the things that I had struggled with early on, I mean, way, way early, multiple decades, we won't talk about, but early on, um, I was working as a chaplain at a children's hospital. And one of the lessons that I slowly began to learn is just physically being, you know, it, where I began to struggle with, well, what do I say to either the sick child or what do I say to, uh, you know, the parents, the family, and, you know, especially if the kid wasn't going to make it, you know, what, what do you, and I didn't want to be, you know, greeting card-ish, you know, um, and one of the best advice that I got, which was one of the toughest, just be there. And what I learned was there were times that I could just sit and not say a word and the family not say a word, but we're in the room with the child and we're all just there. That to me blew my mind because I, I'm, I'm the doer. It's like, I gotta say something. I gotta do something. I gotta make this right. I, but like what you're saying is that was me. I had to get out of my way to say, no, let me just sit because what do they need? And they'll let me know what they need. It's not what I need to say or what I need to do. What do they it's need me to do anymore? Yeah, it's about it's about the other person, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like you you come to the end of yourself, you know. And that's the whole thing that's so powerful um, with you know recovery of any kind is like you have to first admit powerlessness. Right. And it was almost in that moment you admitted powerlessness of like this pain is so deep. I don't know why children die. Like mm-hmm. that, I, I don't know. None of us know. Like nobody, yeah. anybody comes to you with a good answer about that. It's like, I don't trust them, right? Terrible things happen. And so yeah. you get to the end of yourself. And that's where I think the divine, you come to the place where you allow the divine to truly enter. Right. You now, when you're just like, you, you know, I have two prayers. How can I be of maximum service? And here, you take it. That's it. That's all I got. Yeah. When you're in the here, you take it place. It's like, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I think, you know, when we look at a a spiritual sense, and for me, when I say the spirituality, it's, you know, what is greater than myself? What, you know, what, what is out there beyond me? And I think that's what brings out most of that peace when we try to align, you know, work together, have that connectedness with that will. And I think it's so much easier to become connected to another person, become connected to nature. You know, I see it. I I can grasp it. I I can, you know, sit out in nature and say, all right, I'm going to clear my mind and be connected with nature. But to get connected with the spiritual becomes a whole different process because I can't touch that or that or know that, you know, I can feel it when it happens. But that takes patience. And, and yeah, that does take me moving out of the way to say, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's not me. It's not about me. So not. And that's the that was like one of the greatest lessons I got to learn in my process was that it's so not about me. I'm just a vessel. And it's like, you know, Marianne Williamson makes this analogy that's like I'm a lamp and my job is just to plug in like that's mm-hmm. it. Just- Plug in and let it shine. Oh, my Aunt Maria just said, looking great. Thanks, Aunt Maria. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. <Love it. sighs> Hi. See, everybody's enjoying their, their lunch time while listening to 
spirituality and inner peace. Yeah. Well, what I liked is that, you know, if you're on the eat on the West Coast, if you're eating lunch, if you're on the East Coast, you're at my favorite, favorite time of the day, which is tea time. Ah, you participate yeah. in tea time. Um, if anybody that knows me knows I'm a tea fanatic and I have to nice. have tea at like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's time for another tea. Nice. nice. Yeah. And you know, it's funny that I realized, you know, being a recovering alcoholic, I used to be the, the bartender wine person and i really i mean obviously i have a I have a physical spiritual mental addiction to alcohol but what i really liked about it also was the ritual of it and the sharing of it so now i use tea as a ritual and to me a ritual is anything that gives ordinary activities meaning and so there's a ritual to me about tea when i have people over i give them tea i'll have tea with clients there's something about that like coming together this yummy beverage that I just, I love. So I translate it. That, that, that is perfect. Um, yes, I, I love tea, especially in, in the autumn and winter. I drink much more of it then than I do in the summertime, although I'll partake. But I like what you're saying with the ritual because ritual can add so much depth. And when we talk about connectedness and, and that could almost be like the, the subtitle to you know, the, this episode, you know, like connectedness, because, you know, how do we get connected? And, and I think that's what ritual does. You know, ritual makes something, like you say, you know, special. It, 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 it can take that opportunity to show somebody, you know, you mean something. So I'm doing this special ritual because mm -hmm. you're here. Yeah. That's connectedness. Absolutely. And, you know, I've been really crazy lately about Tony Robbins has this whole theory about the six human needs. And one of our human needs, he says, is the need for certainty. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like, you know, routine provides certainty. Faith provides great certainty. Um, you know, getting angry provides some people with a feeling of certainty. Mm -hmm. Working out, lots of different things. Yep. Addicts and alcoholics, eating disorders, spenders, all that stuff, right? The whole thing of certainty mm -hmm. is... You, um, to minimize our pain, but I also believe that ritual is a healthy way and provides yeah. a healthy ritual to provide some sense of certainty, you know, which is like a need that we all have. We need to sort of feel like, you know, things are going to be all right and that we have mm -hmm. a way to cope with pain when it comes. And so having yep. a ritual that you do throughout the day or throughout the year or the seasons, I think gives us meaning and also, um, you know, helps to keep us grounded and connected. Yeah. Oh, and, and I would agree. And so many people do ritual and they don't even identify it as such. And, yeah. you know, when I start to talk to them about things like ritual and spirituality and, and you know, they try to blow it off as, you know, well, I don't do all. I'm not going to, you know, but then it's like, well, what do you do for sports? You know, mm -hmm. all these different things that are out there is ritual. You know, it's. It amazes me. I, I, I got some people who will complain to me about like formalized religion and, you know, their ritual and their pomp and circumstance and this and that. And then I go to, I'm in Maryland, so I choose the Baltimore Ravens over Washington Ravens, but that's just, you know, whatever. But you go to the game, and I'm sure this happens in every stadium, the ritual they have prior to the start of the game is massive. Yes. And they do the same thing before every game and it pumps people up and people love it. And I think it's great. But then I have that thought, but these are some of the same people who say, Oh no, ritual is just, you know, for whomever. I'm like, really? Because I have a stadium of hundred thousand of people probably enjoying this ritual. And if we didn't do this ritual, we'd be disappointed. It's 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 incredible. I think sports is one of the greatest places that we see that we see ritual. I've been to a few sports events, and I'm not really a sports fan. And I was taken aback by the energy in the stadium oh, yeah. that you have hundreds of thousands of people at the exact same time. That's not even including the people who are watching from afar. Mm -hmm. that are all doing the exact same thing. And like you said, it is it is such a way to create community. And one of the other human needs is love and connection. Yep. Is absolutely a way, a way to connect when connect when you have shared rituals with other people. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. And one of the things, you know, I, I love that, and, and I'm not a huge sports fan, you know, I, mean, I, I do like it and appreciate it. And one of the things that, you know, really, you know, kind of, there's an ache, I guess I would say, you know, when you look at that energy, like you're saying, everybody is, is kind of in, in the same mindset and, and you've got, and I start to think, you know, if we were all focused on the well-being of each other with this energy, and everybody here doing that. Can you imagine? I know. I, I mean, I know. what would the world be if, if if everyone in every stadium on on Sundays, you know, who are in these football stadiums, just took all of that energy and put it toward, you know, peace and and goodwill? I don't know. I it, it would be massive. I know it would be massive. That. Mm -hmm. Now, where do we do that? We need to, you know, and I think people are doing it all over, but it's just right. not the level of, right, of sports. If we mm -hmm. could harness that energy, we could just, we could solve a lot of the crises and the spiritual, like, bankruptcy that's going on yep. right now. All right, that's yep. our next question. Hey, my buddy Mark Blackwell is now joining us. And... Uh, hey, and Susie, we got two people from LA. What's up, you guys? <laughs> We're open to questions. Throw out your questions if you got yep. any. If anyone's got any. You know, um, spirituality, anything you want to know about us, anything you want to know about yourself. It is awesome to have uh, people coming on and showing us that they're here and yes. all the good words and good vibes. And yeah, it's, it's excellent. But I guess that brings me though to another part because you know some people could be listening to this and saying, "Hey, that's all great, and you know I love what they're saying, and and this is wonderful," but I'm not feeling it, and that's not my life, and I wish it were my life, but it's not. Any tips? I mean, if, if you got somebody listening who's saying that this is great, but they're not me. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah, this is the majority. I work with a lot of people that are just like, I don't know about this woo woo blah blah blah. And I think uh -huh. the is that what's so rad about spirituality is that it is a personally defined relationship that is completely up to you. There's no rules. There's no limitations. There's no wrong way to do it. I love the, you know, I love the saying of just looking for something that's greater than yourself. Yep. Some people want the word God, universe, source, divine, mm -hmm. any of that stuff. You know, but I ask people to just envision like, do you, is there anything that you think is greater than yourself? You know, and sometimes mm -hmm. you'll like, you know, if I'm doing group therapy with them, like, well, do you think the power of the group is greater than your own personal power? Yep. Is one way to go. Nature, a lot of people connect with nature. Um, and I also usually will recommend that people go back to their childhood because, you know, children are so, oh, I mean, they're just so open and they're so free. And I think children are just so innately connected to the yeah. divine. It's like before all the preconceived notions and the experiences and all this stuff gets piled mm -hmm. on top of, you know, our spirit. So I'll ask people to go back to their childhood. And I also will ask people, I'll just say like, what do you do that makes you feel most alive? Is there any activity that you do where you're just no longer thinking? Because that's where the, um, like where there can be, you know, a little bit of an opening. And then the other thing too, is I let people know that the spiritual quest is a quest of questions. If you're not asking questions, you're not on the spiritual path. If anybody came to me and I was like, hey, so how do we all get here? What do you think we're doing here? If somebody gave me an answer in a nice little box with a bow on top, I'd be like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Right? Like, no. Like, right? There's nobody can give you that answer. We're all trying to figure it out. And so I really try to honor the struggle and right. let you know, like, I'm not, I don't even have it fully figured out. I fired my God so many times. I can't even, <laughs> I mean, I've been like, this isn't working. And I, it, it's a relationship that continues to grow. So if there's sure. any openness or any willingness, like I just, you know, give people all that info. And if people really aren't open to it, then, and they're listening to this, then I'd be like, that's interesting. Or you must've been interested because I don't know how the hell you ended up on this freaking <laughs> this thing. You know, sometimes we are guided by something 
greater yeah. than ourselves because you wouldn't stumble on this if you were like didn't believe in anything uh-huh. oh and synchronicities i'm big on synchronicities oh. anybody that's experienced any kind of synchronicity i try to try to help them explore what do they think that means so it's like you're walking down the street and all of a sudden you're like, I feel like having a coffee. But you're like, I don't really feel like having coffee, but I guess I do. So I'm just going to go into the coffee shop and then you go in the coffee shop and then there's somebody there mm-hmm. and then you're maybe a, a friend you haven't seen in a long time. And they're having a really hard time and you get to do that thing we just talked about where you connect and you yes. speak to that person and you're like, Oh my God, how did that, that was so synchronous. Right. I'm like, how do you find that? I don't know. That happened quite often. Yeah. And, and the whole thing, you know, when you talk about things like that, because, you know, stuff like that has happened to me and you don't recognize it, you know, at the moment. But, you know, it's one of those things where we have to be open. And that is that part of, of the thing of, you know, what is my openness to allow a spiritual sense within me? And what is my openness to live in the moment, to experience the moment to its fullness? And even if, if the moment sucks right now, experience it to its fullness and see what you need to do to move on and see who's there to help you or, or as you're saying, the synchronicity. And, and you know, as I've always tried to say, you know, that there are no coincidences, you know, that, that if we look hard enough we're meant for a reason and we just need to look for that reason or maybe the reason isn't supposed to be known to us. Mm-hmm. But we can just trust there was a reason and maybe it helped us in the long run or helped somebody else in the long run. We don't know. Mm-hmm. We don't need to know. But if we can trust in that, that there's something greater, you know, it's, it's you know kind of the story that people used to say. And it's happened to me a couple of times, you know, you're running late and there's traffic and you're getting all upset. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, thinking, you know, like to your God, you know, why can't you get me where I need to go? And, you know, you're like throwing all these roadblocks and you find out there was this accident and had you been on time, that's where you would have been, you know? And like I said, there's no coincidences, you know, and and that whole frustration of being slowed up, that may have been done for a reason. It's pro it served you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and stuff like that has happened, you know, so I'm not just saying these, you know, niceties, uh, you know, the, these are things and um, we need to be aware of those and open to those and, and really focus in on that present moment. What you're saying about being present is there's a book in one of my coworkers office that I've never read, but the title of it so speaks to me and it's called the courage to be present. Mm. And it just really, like, I guess I should open the book, but I don't even know most of you because the title just gets me every time. And the I perfect think, title. <laughs> right? I think about what you're saying, you know, what you were saying about how, you know, to be present, like you have to have a lot of courage to be present because what's going to come up is yes, those synchronicities. And, you know, I've had spiritual moments where I feel like I've heard from the divine, like very clearly, directly, but it's not just that stuff it's also the courage to sit in the pain and the courage to sit in uncomfortable feelings because you can't only be present for the good stuff and not present for the not so great stuff and what i found is that the more i have sat with my pain and allowed my pain to express itself through me the more joy i have been able to feel there's a direct correlation between your ability to experience all of your emotions and i feel like that's part of it it's Mm-hmm. You, you know, you got to be courageous to sit in in the truth and to sit in the pain. It's easy to sit in the happy times. <laughs> it is. You know what those interesting is for some people that um, you know have addictive and compulsive disorders. When things are going well, they don't know how to deal, and and oh, yeah. that would often trigger them to go out. Mm-hmm. It's like it's almost too good. It's like oh, I gotta, I can't even sit with this. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, exactly. Oh, we have some type. Let's see. Ooh, that question. Oh, this is a good one. Cool. You want to beat it and go for it first? All right. Susie from LA. Hi, Sue. Okay. Well, I'm having you do it. <laughs> okay. But how do you sit through it? What tips do you have for feeling that pain and let it pass through you without dwelling on it? Ooh, that's a good one. You're like, let's get practical. Okay. Yeah. All right. Enough so, of theoretical stuff. Feel feel good stuff. Theoretical 
whatever philosophy. Okay. All right. How do you sit through the pain? Okay. So this is one of the things that I help people do. Um, okay. So first of all, feelings are things that we feel in our body and they are reactions to our thoughts. So I would recommend that when a person is feeling, uh, any kind of pain or discomfort, you take a deep breath and you try to identify, first of all, where are you experiencing that feeling in your body? Are you feeling um, tension in your chest? Are you feeling um, hot? Are you feeling cool? So you would just sit, you know, hopefully by yourself in a quiet space. But if it comes up when you're out in the world, this is part of grounding that we use for yeah. people with anxiety, is you start to envision um sort of what you're feeling, just becoming aware of your body and like, what am I feeling where and what does it feel like? Sometimes people can describe it even like it feels like a certain color. It's got a certain vibration to it. So first you want to identify it. And what I've actually found is that, you know, feelings can only last a short period of time. There's actually some scientific research that I think says feelings can only last like two and a half minutes and then they morph into a different feeling. Could be worse, could be better. So, right. So you sit with that it, 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 as, as fully as you can possibly sit with it, knowing that it's going to morph into something else and being observant of whatever that changes. Now, the other thing is you got to find ways to self soothe, right? Because you want to be able to feel the pain, but you don't need to just like, you know, be punitive. Like I just got to feel it and get through it. Like if you're doing something, I had this group therapist that I noticed in our sessions, she used to rub her arm right here sometimes during session. Hey. Remember one night when I was having a really, really hard time, I was really lonely. I was crying. I was in so much pain. I, for some reason thought of her and I thought, I'm just going to rub my own arm. And it was really, really soothing just to rub my own arm and allow myself to cry and to feel the pain. So things that are self-soothing, like making a cup of tea, yep. um, taking a bath, stuffed animals, pets. You know, it's almost like I think about what would we do with a child that was feeling. If you had a two or three year old that came to you and was like, I am in so much pain like this. Happened. Well, what would you do? You would witness, and you were speaking to this earlier when you were doing chaplaining, and one of the honors of being a therapist is you just get to witness people in their pain and to learn to witness that within ourselves. So really, it's not a matter of just getting you know, out of it. I think there's a thought that like, I think one of our greatest fears is like, if I allow myself to feel this pain, it's going to go on forever. And it's actually like not going to go on forever. There's scientific research that says it only lasts a certain amount of time. Yes. If you're in a depressive episode, like, yeah, you're going to be down for freaking a yeah. while, but there are nuances within that. And I think knowing that if you just go directly into it, it's going to release itself quicker than if you sort of do that. I feel it a little bit. I don't want to feel it anymore. I feel it a little bit. You're just, you're just like um, avoiding the inevitable. So if you just sort of allow yourself to like dive into it and feel it, um, and then do these techniques to, you know, to soothe yourself before, during, after, but really allow yourself to feel it, then um, I would say that's that's the way to go. Is that helpful? You got any more questions on that? Chris, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think that it's very helpful because what, like what you're saying, you know, our feelings don't last long. Our feelings are fleeting. And uh, yeah, this is great. Hey, oh, perfect. <laughs> way to go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the feelings are, are, you know, fleeting. So, you know, what I think becomes, you know, important is to recognize that if I keep hiding those feelings or I keep running away from those feelings, that's when we're going to start to dwell on them. But we're going to dwell on them in the negative way because they will keep resurfacing. Yes. And now we're putting more and more negative feelings on top of those negative feelings. Mm -hmm. And when it comes forward going to be so much greater than what it was originally. If, if we live in that moment and whatever I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I can get it out. But if I'm living in the moment, I can't dwell on it anymore because immediately the moment becomes the past. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, one of the things to do is, is to look at it, to feel it, and then to say to myself, so what's next? You know, I, I am part of a doer when it comes to that piece. So I need to feel it to know what it is that I'm dealing with. But then immediately it becomes what's next. 
Mm -hmm. Those moments, what do I do? And like you're saying, you know, do I self-soothe? Do I need to talk to somebody? Do I need to just take a run? Do I need to walk? You know, what is it that I need to do to make my life different and better? Or crisis, then what do I need to do to get through this crisis? Mm -hmm. And start looking at what are some of the very concrete action steps? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and if I'm looking at concrete action steps to do for the future, I'm not dwelling on those negative feelings. Mm -hmm. That's, so, I love it. It's a, yeah. okay, it's a solution. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And it's, it's very solution focused. Yeah. But, you know, w without sitting there and feeling those feelings, I don't know what solutions to come up with. Because if I don't know what I'm feeling, then well, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, live in that, feel it, but don't dwell there because it's only going to be worse. You know, it's like I've told people before, you know, if you have a, a headache and you keep focused on the headache, what happens to the headache? It gets worse and worse. It's really not getting worse and worse, but I'm dwelling on it. Mm -hmm. You know, refocus yourself away from, you know, hey, I've got a headache. OK, what do I do? I'm going to take this aspirin and I'm going to go close my eyes or whatever. But whatever it is now that you're doing that's away from thinking and dwelling on that headache, that exists start to feel better and it's getting better. It may or may not be getting better, but I'm not focused on it. So it's it's not something I'm caring about right now. But I acknowledged it and I took some action about it. Mm -hmm. And I move on to the next task or whatever it is I need to do to, to deal with migraine or whatever it may be. Good point. I love that you acknowledge it. And then also I I think it can be helpful to just ask it like especially with fear, you know, I'll sort of be like, okay, all right, fear. Okay. I see you. You're here. What are you trying to tell me? Like, what do you want me to know? What are you trying to express to me? And just giving it a space to, to express itself. And what you were saying about what's the next action. I love that. Cause I have found that as I allow myself to really feel something, it was almost like I said, I don't know why I started to rub my arm. It wasn't like that thought out. It's almost like then you will intuitively know yep. sometimes just what to do next. If you really allow yourself to completely experience the emotion, the solution often kind of just comes mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I know what I need to do next. Like, and, and it could be a, a, just even a small thing or like I, I need to pick up the phone and and tell somebody what's going on with me right. or, or whatever it is. It's just like, we got to just get quiet enough to, to listen. Yeah. And, and I've always had this belief. Well, always since at least I've been doing housing work and, and noticed that, that I, I do believe we all have the solutions within us. The problem mm -hmm. is we're not stopping enough to figure that out. You know, I mean, so often when I'm talking to clients and, you know, you say something and even a lot of times, you know, I'll say something that that I, I want to take back and I'll think to myself, oh, man, that was just way too basic. I'm I like I, it was like I dumbed it down for them. I shouldn't have done that. You know, and then I get all my own stuff going on. But they sit there and go, I never thought of that. Because they didn't stop long enough. Yeah. You know, see, it wasn't my issue. So I could see it. Yeah. But then they go, yeah, I never thought of that. That makes sense. That's me. It's in us. We, we got it. And if we just sat long enough and found that peace and, and that peace again, that connectedness, and maybe that connectedness, well, they needed me to say it, you know, but, you know, connectedness again with another person. But we've got the solutions if we look for it. And we might not like the solution, too. I think that's the other problem. We know the solution, but we say, no, 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 no. One. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can do that one. <laughs> Find another solution. Oh God. I get that one a lot. And in those cases, that's, I just pray for the willingness. Like mm -hmm. I, just pray. I mean, I am sometimes just, I get something and it's like, I'm like a brick wall. I'm like, no, thanks. Don't want to do that. And I know that it's, it's the right thing. And so yeah. I, I'll tell people, and I do this, I'll just pray for just the slightest bit of willingness to try that thing. Just like, just, I just need a little bit of willingness. And I have to tell you, I pray for the willingness for things for like a month and it comes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come right away, but I'll just keep kind of working on it. And then an opening will happen. And all of a sudden I'll be doing the thing that I was praying for the willingness to do. And I have a, a, I have a big psychic shift and I'm like, 
wow, all right, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's one of the things that, that gets in a lot of the way of people building their spiritual life or when they they say, you know, they need to get away from their spirituality or, you know, God doesn't listen or whatever, because we're not getting the answer either quick enough or it's not the answer we were looking for. You know, so, yeah. So you know, we, we step back and, and we've got to really, you know, it, it is that humbling or the step one in, in the 12 steps, you know, however you want to look at it. But it is that, you know, again, I'm saying it's not me, get me out of the way. And then I can see the answer and hopefully accept the answer, even if it's not the one I wanted. Or it might even be a third option I never even thought of. And it might be put in my presence. And if I'm not aware of it, because I'm looking for that one answer, you can go right past it. Oh, yeah. You just, this is one of my favorite sayings is the universe has three answers. Yes, not yet, or I have something better in store for you. Mm -hmm. So I like to continue to remind myself that I'm like, I am a finite being. Like, I am just, I got only so much I could do up here. I think about like, this is one of my favorite things. I think about like all the insects. Think about all these insects. Could you, a smart guy, have conjured and thought of all of the insects or the human body, how it works? I could. No. I had a great imagination. No. I'm smart. I couldn't have made no. that up. So why would, I, <laughs> why, I don't, why would I just count on myself when there's this other something else out there mm -hmm. that created these magnificent like miracles and myriad of stuff it's like yeah. i got access to that if i could get out of my own way right i would rather do that yeah. and i've had incredible things happen that are beyond my wildest dreams that i'm like what even even finding mm -hmm. it was because i came to the end of myself i broke down i admitted i was powerless and i turned my life over to being a vessel for this thing that's greater than myself and i'm like stuff is so much better now mm -hmm. and then i i keep going back to it but it, it's that connectedness and and, and I, I loved what you were just saying with, with the insects and everything else because the other thought that popped in was not only you know this whole complexity and who could ever think of all this but if we really dig into it all of us when we look at plant life and animal life and insect life and all of that it's all interconnected all there is a connection. We need all of those, whether we understand what they do or not. You know, that, that mosquito that really irks me. <laughs> th there's a connection in the whole scheme of things that yeah. how could it just be random? We're all connected. I'm not saying even connected in a spiritual way. We are all physically connected. Yeah. One thing needs the other thing. Oxygen that we breathe that was like it's like it's there's obviously some like reciprocity going on you know what he just made me think of though hmm. it's kind of like okay if we look at planet earth and nature and even you know the cosmos and all that stuff and all of this like infinite wisdom that's going on and then you know humans have basically really screwed up the planet it's almost like human beings have become i feel like more and more um you know, possessed by our egos. I mean, if you just yes. look at the presidential election, look at who's up there. I mean, it's all ego. It's all ego. Ass. I mean, it's like he's out of his mind. And it's like, you know, we have almost, you know, we're destroying our mother. We're destroying nature and the and this infinite intelligence and divine wisdom. And it's like such a parallel, I feel, feel like, of what's going on, you know, with us as a species. It's just like there's more and more you know, ego driven stuff. And I, that's why I did a, I did a um, episode about like, is America about to hit rock bottom? But it's even like just our human beings as right. a species, like, are we about to hit rock bottom? Because it does seem like there's this huge revolution in spirituality and God bless Oprah Winfrey, because Oprah Winfrey is, you know, a public person who's bringing spirituality to mm -hmm. people. Like here, look at this person, read this person, look at all right. these super soul sunday and so i do feel like there's a spiritual um yeah you know, revolution going on and my hope is that it it you know it wins but if it doesn't then that you know that wasn't what was meant to happen and right. out of the destruction will become this new hopefully creation but mm -hmm. yeah and and i can't disagree with that you know because i i think there is that there's a huge
huge awareness now of virtual. And in that awareness, though, I always have to believe good is always going to win. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not naive, but good is always going to win eventually. But what that looks like, what does winning look like? Mm -hmm. And it may not be the way we perceive it to look. Because, again, we're ego driven. As much as we want to humble ourselves, as much as we want to get ourselves out of the way, we do that to varying degrees. Mm -hmm. We're still ego driven. And I think part of that is because our minds, as you mentioned earlier, are finite. We can't see a bigger picture beyond our minds. And if there's a bigger picture out there that we can't grasp, which I, I think is out there, are we going to recognize and or welcome when good wins? Mm -hmm. Because we all in our ego think we know what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Is it going to look like that? Is that what it's going to be? Well, I think we're going to help. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I think I think that it's going to, I mean, I feel like in my own personal back and forth, it's like, There's a different feeling when I'm aligned with spirit that to me feels like winning or, you know, yeah. however you want to term that. And it is this sort of back and forth where sometimes my ego wins and it's like, yes, but it's so fleeting. Uh -huh. Whereas when I'm in alignment, that feeds me, you know, in a different way. And so it's like we're right. recalibrating our our definition, you know, uh -huh. I feel of, of winning or whatever or wellness or right. success or whatever it is. It's like, I personally feel like that tug of war. And so it'll be interesting to see if, I mean, if more of more of us go on this quest for consciousness uh -huh. and um, start to realign what, what, it, what it means to be successful or to win. Yeah. Then hopefully. Yeah. Win out. But I don't know. The verdict got on that one. It could be a while. It could be a while. But but like, living you know, in the moment, all we can do is what we can do right now. <laughs> Best way I look at it. And uh, next moment, we're still doing all that we can do right now. <laughs> yes. Ooh, um, I, uh, town. I can say there's somebody from my area. <laughs> nice. So welcome. All right. So go Leonardtown in Maryland. All right. Nice. Thanks for sharing the perspective on these topics. You are very welcome. And, yeah, uh, my pleasure. So I'm going to do the longest talk about this stuff. <laughs> Anybody else have any other questions for us? We have like five minutes left. Mm. No, all so, questions are questions. All questions are welcome. See, we, we explained it so well. They are sitting there in this peacefulness saying, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope that so. That was a going me, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I think uh, unless a question does pop up, but what would you say as, as we're kind of, you know, sum up all this stuff that we talked about? And, and you know, for me, I, I think everything that we've talked about back to this topic, how would you sum it up in, in I won't give you a limit, but what would be the summary? <laughs> I was going to say, like, you know, in 100 words or less, some. <laughs> Oh, I got this is Twitter and sum it all up. <laughs> all right. I got to check in with, uh, hang on. FYI, this is how I do most things nowadays is I check in with uh, the greater, the greater power to see um, what I'm to be a vessel to. So hang tight, guys. All right. Um, you are God. You are love. You are everything that you desire to possess is already within you. And just be brave enough to be quiet in order to hear those answers. That's pretty much it's. it's that's, that's what came to me. Be brave, my friends. Be brave. I got you nothing after that. that. <laughs> yeah, you won't be given anything that you can't get through, but it takes a lot of courage 
Yep. It just takes a lot of courage, but the rewards are tremendous because the level of joy and presence and, you know, the spiritual experiences that I have are so profound. And I don't think I would have had them if I wasn't willing to sit through so much pain of my own, um, you know, of my own, you know, need for, for my journey. You know, yeah. it's a journey called a journey for, you know, a reason. If it was just skipping along the same path. It's not really a journey. It's just kind of like, oh, Groundhog Day. It's sunny and beautiful out again. I mean, I live in California, so it's like that most days. But the internal uh, journey is, you know, you are capable beyond measure, and and you'd be surprised what lives within you. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised at the magic that is within you. Those are wonderful words. And uh, uh, we have a comment. I think you were given a brain to think through. Ooh, what do you mean by that, Anne Maria? Hmm. <laughs> she didn't finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I was hoping there's more to it than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, as she's continuing to type, I, I think one of the things that you had mentioned that, that really stuck with me, I mean, the whole thing was wonderful, but that whole notion of being brave. And, and I, I think we need to continually encourage people and empower people to sit with all of this because it does take that courage and that bravery to go through it. And so that's where we're going to lose it because we're just going to walk away. And if we have people around us who can continue that encouragement, mm-hmm. I think it's going to make, you know, world a difference, but, but it, it does take a lot of that. And, and I think it's people realizing to get through because then they are empowered to say, hey, look, I, I was brave enough. I was strong enough. And what is that going to say to them later? You know, which when they hit something else, I could go back to this and say, but wait a minute, I am brave and I am strong and I have the courage. How do I know it? I did it. And it worked. Exactly. Do it again. That's And that's the thing. It's like a muscle. You have to use it the first time is like, hardest the first few times it's hard and then you start to just know there's such an empowerment that comes when you're able to sit through your own pain and know like okay it's been worse than this before okay, I've, I've done it before you know and then i think what's so powerful about you know about groups like we were talking about before and ritual that you do with other people is that you then get to share your experience with other people which creates so much hope yeah. on both ends when you hear other people and you also get the me too me too. And the fact that we aren't alone, like as humans, is also symbolic that we are never alone, even when we are alone, because yeah. we're connected to the divine. And so the divine lives within us, it lives through us. And so, you know, connecting, being able mm-hmm. to share your pain to help someone else is really a transformational experience as well. Yeah. Aunt Maria, what do you want to tell us? Do you want <laughs> yeah, to really? Ask <laughs> we're going to go, but I don't want to leave you hanging. Uh, get some background music, maybe. Uh, I mean, we, we definitely were given brain. Your brain is not a bad thing, you guys. Oh, uh, oh it didn't come up. No. There was probably a lot I of typing, too. Brain. I mean, our brains, obviously, our brains are, are incredible tools. We just need to use them properly. Mm-hmm. And, for me, you know, I, and this is just me. I just try not to let my brain, you know, completely run the show, knowing that there is a spirit also within this human vessel that I am and that I rather have my spirit and my soul be my GPS because I have found that to be a way of life that is Mm -hmm. so much more happy and meaningful and profound for me. But of course, I use my brain. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're not saying, you know, don't use it. (laughs) I had to get dressed today. (laughs) You know, I mean, we got to use our brains. Oh, okay. Maybe this is, let's see. (gasps) <gasps> oh, oh, that's so oh, good. Oh. My Aunt Maria, she's dropping some knowledge, this lady. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, our brains are part of... Give, the, all right, so this is what you said, you guys. Yep. So Aunt Maria says, you were given a brain by the divine, and I feel that you are responsible for all the decisions you make. Yeah, mm-hmm. amen. That's another way yep. that I feel like we... Um, we can move beyond mm-hmm. um, like letting, I don't know. It's just taking, yes. I don't even know where I want to go with that. 
Yes, you have to. I, take I say yes. <laughs> yes, Anne Maria, you guys take responsibility for your actions. That's my answer. Yes. Um, we do have to take responsibility for our actions because if we don't, then we're just victims. And when you're in victim energy, you are definitely not. No. As look, we're always connected to the divine, and and our struggles happen for a reason. And I I really like to honor people's struggles, but having been a person that has definitely spent quality time in victim mode there's no way to allow the divine to enter and ignite change or new action if you're in the victim mode because when you're in the victim mode you're basically saying you take care of me and that's not honoring the divine within that's saying i haven't i there's nothing really in here i'm i can't do anything for myself right and some people feel really comfortable there because you need to be really brave, right? You need to be really brave to take responsibility for your actions, connect with that thing that is greater than you. Because once you hear what is greater than you, once you hear God talking to your ear, you can't unhear. Yeah. Once you know that wisdom, you, you can't go back, yeah. right? And so um, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the one of the greatest things that's helped me, and Pema Chodron has an incredible book called Fail, Fail Again, Fail Better or something like that. And it's all about, you know, when you do screw ups, let's say you do make a bad decision mm -hmm. and you screw up and hurt somebody's. We all do. And you're gonna, right? Yeah, you're human, fallible. Thank God, right? Life would be so boring. Is how do you recuperate from that? How do you get back up, show humility? And part of that sometimes when you've screwed up so bad that you're like, you don't know what to do, that is all often when you can ask for information from mm -hmm. yeah. the divine. They like, oh, I just screwed up. I feel like shit. I don't know what to do. Like, is this never going to get better? Right. Mm -hmm. But you go into victim mode, like, oh, I did this because they did that. You don't take yeah. responsibility for your actions. You never going to get in the solution. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because that whole thing, and, and that's part of the whole crux of, of, of it all. Because once, I mean, I, I will say, I mean, we can be victims of a certain thing that happens to us. But mm -hmm we have choices and responsibility for how we respond to what happened to us. Mm -hmm. And if it is a decision that I, I think one of the great things of hope out of all that is that I can take responsibility because if I'm in responsibility, that it means I have something that I can do with it. So if I made a choice and totally screwed up, I take responsibility. That means I can make another choice. And like I said, we can learn from that. And once I learn from that, I grow. And when I grow, I get more into the spiritual and the more understanding of who I am and who I can be. If I make a bad choice and like you're saying, you know, oh, well, it's because of this person or society or this or that, that I did all that. Well, I'm stuck at that point. I mean, we go from there because I can't change society or I can't change the person who I'm blaming for putting me in the situation. But I can change me. If I take that responsibility and say, yeah, did it, screwed up, okay, got it. Here's what I learned. Here's what I'm going to do different. That's hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking responsibility is big. Mm -hmm. Good it really stuff. Is. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's part of the, the piece where you get to the end of yourself and you admit powerlessness when you admit defeat. Mm -hmm. you know, that to me is taking you know responsibility like right it's like it's not your fault that you're an alcoholic but it is your responsibility it's not your fault that you were abused as a kid but it's your responsibility mm -hmm. like what do you do now yeah well, and that happens. becomes difficult and and that's what i've counseled many people about and and they've never looked at it from that viewpoint you know it, it's yeah i mean i can't help what you've been through or what you may have within but you choices mm -hmm. you're not stuck you can make choices even with everything you've been dealt nobody took away your ability to choose mm -hmm. good stuff good stuff awesome good stuff. so um as we're kind of wrapping up um exactly thank you Aunt maria i'm glad <laughs> you brought that point <laughs> I'm glad we nailed it. We yeah, I've got people agree, you know. I, um, yeah, I was a little bit sure. I love her too much. So, uh, see, this connectedness, you got all this support. That, that That's great. I know. I really do. I'm so blessed. I am yes. so, I have such a tribe. Like, I have got a solid tribe yes. of people that showed up with, you know, two hours notice. Hey, you know.
So as I was say then, for those who aren't in your tribe, how can other people who want to be get in touch with you? Oh my goodness, I'd love for you to join me. I want you guys, I'm looking at you, I want you guys to join me. Um, I'm always cooking up stuff. This is my life's mission. I start every day asking of how I can be of maximum service through the platform, through my being. And so you can join me if you head on over to youarecomplete.com. Mm -hmm. You can subscribe to the newsletter. I don't send out a ton of newsletters. I send out at least once a week to get the vlog. And I share information in my newsletters that I don't share everywhere else. So that's definitely part of the inner inner tribe. Now, if you want to join me on Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can just check me out at You Are Complete. Mm -hmm. um, it's Y O U A R E, complete. Snapchat's You Are Complete B. And actually, if you just go to my website, you'll get linked up to everything yep. right there. It's I hope quick and easy. It. Yes, it's a one stop shop. Exactly. I like it. Well, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the uh, time that you took, and, and this has been inspiring, and at least for me and hopefully for all the listeners. And uh, if people really liked what they heard, share with your friends because this will be rebroadcast. Um, and uh, you can find that. I know I'll be putting it over on my podcast, which you can just search uh, for um, on Finding Peace on any podcast apps or whatever you use, or just go to my site, lifejourneyblog.com. And um, Bianca, I'll give you, uh, you know, the video as well, and you can spread you it all it's over. It's going to go out to my posse. It's going to go out to my posse. Excellent. All right. Well, have a great rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy mm -hmm. uh, tea time in a couple hours. I will. I will. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you so much, Chris, for having me on here and for finding me and, you know, making sure I got it on the schedule. And uh, we made it happen today. So it was great. So thanks to all of you. So many blessings. Yep. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.